Hello everybody, this is Robertus Haas from Innsbruck, Austria. First of all, I would like to beg your pardon for not being able to join you in Lugano. But last week at the ECFG in Rome, I caught a cold and I'm still coughing around and uh, blowing my nose and I guess you prefer to not have me in Lugano. Today I will try to give you an overview on the role of Citrophores in fungal pathogenesis uh, and the potential applications of Citrophores. And I will focus mainly on Aspergillus fumigatus, our favorite pet. I don't think that Aspergillus fumigatus requires an introduction in this audience. You all know it's the most common airborne mold pathogen causing allergic and invasive diseases. For about 20 years, the elucidation of fungal anhomeostasis maintaining mechanisms is a major research focus in my lab. You all know iron is an essential metal because it's required for numerous cellular processes as cofactor, for example, as heme, as iron sulfur clusters, or as elemental iron. On the other hand, excess of iron is toxic and causes oxidative stress. Therefore, cells have evolved fine-tuned unregulatory mechanisms to maintain the delicate balance between iron uptake, iron consumption, and iron storage. It's current belief that microbial cells have no means for iron excretion. And last but not least, iron acquisition plays an important role in pathogenicity, because iron is essential for both the host and the pathogens, and during infection there's more or less a battle for iron. And vertebrates have evolved iron withholding mechanisms to fight infections in the course of the innate immune system. Here you can see a very simplified scheme of mammalian iron homeostasis. Key components are transferrin, transferrin receptor, ferritin, and iron regulatory proteins. All of these key components of mammalian iron homeostasis are missing in fungal systems. And as iron is essential for the host and the pathogens, we think that the differences in iron homeostasis uh, might pave the way uh, to improve um, uh, antifungal therapy uh, or diagnosis of fungal infections. So here's a summary of the fungal iron acquisition and uh, storage mechanisms. As most fungal species, Aspergillus fumigatus employs two high affinity iron uptake strategy. The first one is reductive iron assimilation. It starts with reduction of ferric iron to ferrous iron, which is then taken up into the cell. The second system is the citrophore system. So citrophores are low molecular mass iron specific chelators. The major extracellular citrophore of Aspergillus fumigatus is termed triacetylfusin C. We call it in, germ, in short TAF C. So TAF C is uh, produced within the cell. It's excreted via specific transporters outside the cell TFC can chelate iron with an extremely high affinity. The binding constant for iron is around uh, 10 to the power of 30. Uh, iron citrophore 4 complexes are then taken up by specific transporters. Within the cells, TFC is hydrolyzed to liberate the iron. Most fungal species produce citrophores, but there are famous exceptions, like baker's yeast, candida albicans, cryptococcus newformans interestingly, all yeast species. Despite the fact that these species are not able to produce citrophores, they are able to utilize citrophores produced by other fungi or also bacteria. Within the cell, the iron is then used in the metabolism. Excessive iron can be transported into the vacuole for detoxification, or alternatively, it can be stored in an intracellular citrophore, which is called ferricrosin. Here you can see how the major citrophores of Aspergillus migetus look like. So the extracellular citrophore, TAFC, is an atypical tripeptide consisting uh, of three modified ornithine residues, while the intracellular citrophore is an atypical cyclic hexapeptide, again consisting of three modified ornithine residues, which chelate the iron, and three additional amino acids. So these citrophores uh, have a molecular mass of less than 1 kD. We identified eight of the 10 predicted citrophore biosynthetic enzymes, shown here in purple. You can see here still two question marks and all of the encoding genes are upregulated under iron starvation. 
the major precursors, the non-proteogenic amino acid ornithine from the urea cycle. The second precursor is mevalonate from the isoprenoid biosynthetic pathway. So you can see there's a link to agrostorol biosynthesis. We have shown that the lack of CDA, uh, which leads to a lack of all siderophores, so intracellular and extracellular siderophores, leads to avulence of aspergillus fumigatus. So siderophore biosynthesis is, is essential for virulence. Recently, we also worked on cofactors of siderophore biosynthesis. So CIDA requires flavin adenine dinucleotide, which uh, uh, is derived from um, riboflavin, and CID and CT, which are non-ribosomal peptide synthetases, require phosphopantetine, which is attached by the phosphopantetine transferase. And we found that blocking biosynthesis of either riboflavin or pantotenic acid renders aspergillus fumigatus virulent in moving models of aspergillosis. I mean, riboflavin and pantotenic acid are, of course, not exclusively required for siderophore biosynthesis, but nevertheless, these data underline that siderophore biosynthesis is a hub for virulence. In a collaboration, with the group of um, David Stevens, we found that siderophores are also crucial for microbial competition. For example, in the interaction between Aspergillus fumigatus and the bacterium Pseudomonas aeruginosa, which can colonize the same niche, for example, in cystic fibrosis patients. So Pseudomonas aeruginosa produces the siderophore pyoverdin, and we found that Aspergillus fumigatus is unable to utilize this siderophore. Uh, we did this by uh, using a mutant lacking high affinity iron uptake, and this mutant is only able to grow in the presence of high amounts of iron or in the presence of siderophores, like TFC, but it's not able in, uh, to grow with pyoverdin as the sole iron source. And we found that the supernatant of Pseudomonas uh, um, uh, aeruginosa wild type PA14, but not of a citrophore lacking mutant like PVDD, PCHE, causes iron starvation from Megados because it induces the expression of genes which are upregulated by iron starvation. And in line, we found that the supernatant of Pseudomonas aeruginosa wild type, but not of the citrophore lacking mutants, downregulate Aspergillus from Megados metabolism. So this means that actually Pseudomonas aeruginosa can starve Aspergillus fumigatus for iron. So also in the microbial competition, there's a battle for iron. So now I come to the applied aspects of uh, citrophores. So as I showed you, citrophores are crucial for virulence of Aspergillus fumigatus, uh, which indicates that the citrophore system is active during infection, and citrophores are fungal-specific metabolites. So how can we take advantage of this? So the possibilities are inhibition of the citrophore biosynthesis for antifungal treatment. So we do not have a compound to treat so far. Uh, I mean, Pablo Sobrado from Virginia Tech, he found that Celestrol can inhibit um, CID-A, but uh, it's not used in the clinics yet. The second possibility would be taking advantage of the citrophore system for fungal-specific drug delivery. Uh, so for drug delivery, uh, I, sh I told you that citrophores are taken up by specific transporters. One of them is MIRB, which is specific for TAF-C. Uh, and importantly, um, these citrophore uh, type transporters uh, are present only in the fungal kingdom. They're not present in uh, bacteria, plants or mammals. Uh, and here what we found, we attached by a trick uh, the fluorescent dye, fluorescent uh, isothiocyanide to uh, TAF-C. And we found that in a strain expressing MIR-B, so the respective citrophore transporter, this fluorescent derivative is taken up, while uh, a fungal strain not expressing uh, the uh, citrophore transporter is unable to take up this compound. So this means then we can attach uh, moieties 
to the SIDRO4, and this might enable a, um, a possible novel mechanism for fungal-specific drug delivery. So we're working on this at the moment. So a few words to VL2397. This is a new antifungal compound produced by Acrimonium persicinum, a fungus. It was isolated by Astellas and developed by Weichel. And actually it has a Citro 4 type structure. So it has the same, more or less the same basic structure as ferricrosin. So ferricrosin has here glycine, serine, glycine, and here it's asparagine, leucine, and a D phenylalanine. And uh, it's used as an aluminum chelate and not as an iron chelate. There were promising preclinical pre results for treatment of aspergillosis and it passed successfully clinical phase one. Unfortunately, phase two clinical trial was discontinued in 2019 due to low patient accrual rates and strategic reasons. So what we found is that actually um, the Citro 4 ion transporter CIT1 is essential for the uptake of VL2397. Here you can see a GFP labeled transporter. It's uh, localized in the plasma membrane. And you can see that the susceptibility of a wild type uh, increases with ion starvation compared to higher ion concentrations, and that the lack of CID1 renders Aspergillus fumigatus resistant. So in summary, this has shown that VL239 uh, is taken up by the Citro 4 transporter 1, uh, and, but the target is still unknown. So this uh, uh, little study was uh, supported by Weichel. So next now to the use of Citro 4 for diagnosis of fungal infections. Okay, so it was already known that uh, Citro 4, some Citro 4 can chelate not only iron, but also some other metals with a similar size, like gallium or aluminium. And it was the idea of Clemens de Cristoforo, a radio pharmacologist here in Innsbruck, to use um, gallium labeled Citrophos as Trojan horses to trace fungal infections. Because there's a very nice isotope of gallium, it's called gallium 68. It's a positron emitter with a half-life of 67 minutes, and it's already widely used in medicine uh, for positron emission tomography. So we found that gallium labeled TAF C is taken up as efficiently as uh, iron labeled Citrophos, so in this case TAF C, via specifically via MIR B. Here you can see a combination of positron emission tomography with computer tomography. The, uh, the image was taken uh, 45 minutes post injection of one microgram uh, TAF C, gallium 68 labeled TAF C, in a control mouse and in a mouse infected with Aspergillus fumigatus. And you can see that the majority of a label is found in kidneys and in the bladder because TAF C is. Um, eliminated from the body, mainly via renal excretion. But if you look closely, you can find the uh, label also in the infected lungs. And the close-up shows nicely, here sits Aspergillus fumigatus, uh, taking up gallium labeled TAF C because it's thinking that this is its iron source. So this shows uh, that gallium uh, labeled citrophos can used for in vivo imaging uh, of fungal infections. In a recent collaboration with Clemens de Cristoforo, we generated several fluorescent uh, conjugates of TAF-C for hybrid imaging of Aspergillus fumigatus. And one of the successful compounds we generated was the Cy5 conjugated one. Here you can see classical um, gallium 68 imaging of a non-infected mouse. And this experiment indicated excretion of this compound via the hepatobiliary route and not via the renal route as found for TAF-C. 
Here is now uh, in vivo micro PET CT imaging of the lungs of non-infected versus infected mice. And here is Aspergillus fumigatus taking up this dye. So this is useful for in vivo imaging um, of infection with Aspergillus fumigatus. But what is now possible in addition with this compound is fluorescent imaging. And this is uh, not possible in vivo, only ex vivo, so it's not useful for the clinics, uh, but for preclinical trials, because here you can see now the fluorescence uh, taken up by Aspergillus fumigatus in infected lungs uh, versus non infected lungs. But back to our original imaging approach using natural TFC labeled with gallium 68. So this imaging approach using intravenously injected TFC indicated uh, that it ends up in intact form in the urine, uh, which again indicates that also um, in vivo produced TFC by Aspergillus fumigatus in the lungs might end up in intact form in the urine, which might serve as a biomarker allowing non-invasive testing. To analyze this, to test this hypothesis, we established a method for quantification of TFC in urine. We did this by a combination of capillary electrophoresis and mass spectrometry. So mass spectrometry is a wonderful, highly sensitive method, but absolute quantification is not that easy, particularly due to ion suppression effects. To enable absolute quantification, we generated a carbon-13 labeled TFC, uh, which has the very same chemical features as natural carbon-12 TFC, but differs only in the molecular mass. I'm not going into the details, but um, uh, we were successful in really establishing a method uh, enabling absolute quantification of TFC in urine. This was in collaboration with the analytical chemist Herbert Lindner from Innsbruck. In collaboration with the group of Martin Hönigl from the Medical University in Graz, we analyzed the contents in urine TFC normalized to creatinine in different patient cohorts, including healthy individuals, then hematological patients tested negative for invasive aspergillosis, and patients diagnosed with probable invasive aspergillosis. And as you can see from this scheme, there are statistically highly significant differences with this probable invasive aspergillosis patients showing the highest TFC creatinine uh, indexes. So these data are a summary of all our data we have and uh, indicated uh, that the urine TFC cre uh, creatinine index might be a valuable novel biomarker for diagnosis of invasive aspergillosis, enabling non-invasive testing. So we have time series analysis of several patients, but I would like to show only two examples. Uh, the first example is this patient, which was diagnosed with probable invasive pulmonary aspergillosis during caspofungin prophylaxis due to high uh, galactomenan and beta diglucan levels in serum. Up in this diagnosis, the therapy was switched to intravenous voriconazole. The patient showed clinical improvement and the biomarker levels decreased, indicating a clearance of the infection. The TAFC creatinine index actually paralleled 
uh, the Galacta Melan and with a D glucan markers, it was very high at the day of diagnosis and decreased. So it showed a similar performance to the other biomarkers. But now to the second patient. This was an AML patient receiving a transplantation. And during fluconazole therapy, this patient was diagnosed uh, with probable invasive aspergillosis due to positivity in uh, PCR from serum and uh, serum galactomannan. Um, due to this diagnosis, the therapy was switched to posaconazole, but nevertheless, the patient had to be submitted to ICU and unfortunately died. In contrast to these two biomarkers for aspergillosis, the TFC uh, creatinine index was already highly positive way before the transplantation and also during the posaconazole uh, therapy. So these data indicate that at least in some patients, the TFC creatinine index is able to indicate uh, aspergillosis when other markers fail. So with this data, I come to my summary. So I hope I have convinced you that cirrofos are central components of the physiology of most fungi and are crucial for the virulence. Cirrofo biosynthesis and cirrofo uptake is unique to the fungal kingdom. And cirrofos are attractive targets for improvement of antifungal therapy and diagnosis of fungal infections. Of course, all of this work would not have been possible with, uh, without my wonderful group, including many uh, master students, PhD students and postdocs. I don't have the time to name them all. Uh, and also the, our excellent collaborations uh, have been extremely valuable um, for these studies. The studies were sponsored mainly by the Austin Science Foundation, uh, also by the Austrian National Bank, the Tyrol Science Foundation, the European Science Foundation, and Cost Action. And with this, I would like to send thank you for your attention. Thank you.